hey, and apparently we're alive. This is the green shirt show. That's right. <laughs> if you don't have a green shirt on, you can't watch this show. And seriously. I, we are the green screens, Jim. That's right. Be the green screen you want to be. Let's see. Right, right. Let's not all, see. All you get is green, though. That's right. It's green is all you need. Right. So, Alan, I heard, and I've been following you on your blog, <laughs> big fan of the Todd Dog blog, and one of the things you've been working on is this, what you're calling, I guess, the Assignment Bank Nuevo. <laughs> Which I spelled wrong for, for like a month till Barbara Sawhill corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a good point. I don't know Spanish well enough to correct anyone on this. <laughs> um, but I, you kind of got it up and running, and I guess we're going to use this as an uh, as a example to walk through it, take a look at it. Yeah, I want to show, I was really hoping we could do a thing where it would be ready for you to download and like install on a fresh site. Yeah. Um, but like, it's close, and, and I'll show you. But there, there's some things uh, about setting up these uh, admin screens on the dashboard side um, yeah. that are like taking me into all kinds of new territory in WordPress. Um, that that are that are a little bit uh, blowing me, so I'm just banging away at it. And you know, this morning I chopped away a few more bits. Um, so I was hoping maybe you know, at least conceptually, and I could show you what's there right now. Yeah. And um, and you can let me know. Wow, it's not even worth bothering with doing a screen like that. Just tell people to how to edit things. But um, absolutely, let's I take a look. Yeah, I guess one of the things, and I'll bring up the screen share. Um, I want it to be flexible. So you know, one piece is that uh, let's get the right window open here so I don't do the crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, because crazy it's real. Thing. This is the way in which you do get participatory assignments. Depending on the class, no matter how big or how small it is, and I think for some people that ability to create a participatory structure, whether it's DS one hundred six related or not, is really powerful in terms of theme. And I haven't seen too many themes like that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah so I mean, it, it it's going to look really simple. So a, a few things I, I wanted to do was to make it so um, people could customize the appearance. Like I could have done the same theme that we have on the assignment bank. Sure. Um, but actually, the style sheet is, is it's really messy because it's just been tinkered with. Um, yeah, well, the, that's a that's a rough theme on DS106, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not well, a it's, simple it's, theme. Yeah, it's beautiful, but um, you know, we've basically been just lopping things on top of it. So um, I, I want it to be flexible on a number of fronts. So um, I made a decision to use um, a WordPress version of the Twitter Bootstrap theme, which is kind of a theme framework. Um, that's really simple um, and has a lot of things built in uh, for doing your layouts, but other things that it's responsive. So um, when you um, resize the screen, um, all the content flows around. Um, so um, it's, it's going to be a child theme of WP Bootstrap. Um, and then right now um, on the front page, um, basically it's like the front page of the Assignment Bank site. Um, I haven't got the part yet for putting up icons of everything, um, but th there's a few things that we don't have, and they're they're pretty small. So for each one, like I've got this cooking category, there's two things in there, so it indicates how many assignments are within each one. Um, and the idea is here, you would do through style sheets change how it looks. Like if you don't want a gray box, you would make it look um, however you want. But you will be able to customize an icon to be associated with each thing. Um, and the, the other thing is that, uh, and I'll show you, um, I didn't want to just call them assignments. So I'm trying to build in the flexibility. Right now they're called challenges. They could uh -huh. be lessons. They could be called recipes. They could be called greatest hits. Um, yeah. so, so instead of being assignments, uh, internally they're known as things. So there's <laughs> things that you create. That's cool. Um, and then this, this front page is actually, and I'll, I'll bring up the WordPress page, um, this is actually just a page content. So um, there's lots of ways you could use this. So I've written this little description in the page content, and then I actually have, I don't know if you can see, there are some short codes that uh, automatically inserts the number of things in the system and how many examples have been done. Um, yeah, but very cool. You, you could put that in, or you could put anything you want as an intro. Um, on this. And then in WordPress, like I have it now set with the theme to make a static page my front page. 
But you could build a site where you've got a normal blog page on the front, and this could be an internal page. So I wanted to make it flexible um, where this main index occurs. Is there a place where it actually says, so I see you see you have like in the short code thing count and example count. Yeah. Are you automatically saying the thing could be greatest hits, it could be assignments, it could be examples, etc. That's yeah, the, automatically something you program for your particular use of the of the assignment thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, what cool. it does is the short code just inserts. Um, uh, it, it figures out how many things there are, and it says what they are. Um, so it actually uh, dynamically fulfills that thing called challenges. So when I get in there, I'll show you. We'll change that, and we'll we'll see what happens as it propagates through the site. Cool. That's very cool. I like that. So th that's the flexibility of, of that piece. So when you go into one of these, and of course these are my you know usual silly. Um, assignments, um, so it still needs to have icons associated with. Um, I sort of made the sort thing uh, be a menu um, instead of links like on the old site. Yeah. Um, so you, you have ways to sort, you know, there's only two here. Well, we still have our same um, ratings things. Um, we have uh, basically the same information as the um, other site. And if we went over to say, let's see, let's go to I forget which one has more examples in it. Um, the gardening site. Um, this one has, um, like, this image from it came from the gardeners actually uh, goes to Flickr. Um, and this is a, a, doing the embed for something where the thing, um, the example is a, a YouTube video where it's automatically embedded. Um, oh, nice. That's awesome. So, you know, again, it, it's really kind of basic uh, laid out. Um, Again, with the idea that you could frame it and design it the way you want. So, and then when you come in, and this is actually the a view of uh, an assignment. You got when it was created, what kind it is, um, by the person who created it, Polly Green Thumb, um, and then all this uh, other bit. So, um, I have to. Uh, my grammar needs to be corrected. Do this challenges. <laughs> Uh, be, I won't be able to help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I changed it, and you'll see, like, originally I had them entered as singular, and then I made a plural, and some places I, I have to switch it back to singular. So anytime it says challenges here, um, and, and again, we'll change it when I go into the admin, um, we can change it on the fly if we want to make them lessons uh, or whatever. Uh, so again, this has all the functionality of... Um, uh, the uh, original assignment bank. I did program, like, a random... Uh, link here into uh, the oh, menu, yeah. which actually doesn't seem to be working right now. Um, and also enabled comments, um, which you could turn on or off. Um, but, you know, we never really put comments on individual assignments, but I, I could see where that would be useful for people to give feedback. Sure. Um, and then the tags, um, I sort of changed the way the tags are done um, to make it a little more flexible. So, um, these, you know, have the general tag, which is gardening challenges, and then each tag has a unique number, which is based on the post ID. Um, it makes it easier to track them. Sure, um, that makes so, sense. So same thing, and and I don't have it working yet here, but there'll be um, a way you can add an example directly if you're not syndicating. Um, and, yeah. and again, all these options are going to be configurable. So if you're running a site where you're not doing syndication to bring stuff in, you won't see this stuff about the tags, whatever. Um, you okay. might just you might just have the form. So someone might have a site where the only way they want people to add examples is through a web form. Um, yeah. Or they might have a site where they want to just uh, enter the, um, the examples directly and not even have people publicly submit them. So I'm trying to think of that flexibility as well. That's awesome. Um, and then the menus, and I'll show at the top. Is there uh, like a wizard for the theme? Well, I guess you'll show me. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. If, yeah, um, and uh, the menus actually are not going to be pre-constructed. You know, the documentation will let you know, but you could um, build these any way you want. So um, there's a way, uh, which we don't have on the old site, to view all the assignments, um, the challenges, um, <laughs> um, or any could, of them. Yeah, you could do the random um, one, which seems to be working here, and then by um, thing. But these are all um, editing the internal WordPress WordPress uh, menu uh, structure. Again, making it flexible so uh, you could design the navigation uh, what makes sense to you. So um, now let's go. 
Yeah, the, on the inside. I think that uh, makes total sense because you want to use that menu structure. Yeah. So one thing I, I wanted to I love do. It. Well, let people know how many people have viewed it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a view count in there. Cool. And, and a thing that counts how many examples are done. Because it's amazing to see how many people have viewed the DS-106 assignments. Yeah, yeah, that's really valuable. And it's a, it's very useful to be able to sort on that because, um, you know, you want to see popular. Um, you want to see ones that have the most examples. Um, one thing to do from the beginning was to try to um, get the number of plugins needed to a minimum yeah. to make it easier on the install. So I've basically custom, I've hand-coded all the post types and uh, taxonomy stuff. And so I have it down to two plugins, and um, they're actually not strictly required. It could work without them. Um, so one is feed WordPress, which you would need if you're syndicating in examples, and then post ratings if you're going to be putting on the, the star ratings. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so um, on the WordPress interface, um, I use Martha's nomenclature, which I always loved, you know, things stuff to do or stuff that is done. So yeah, um, exactly. in this case, um, you have things to do. So these are the equivalent of um, all the assignments. Um, yeah. So you come in here and you see all the assignments that have been created. Um, there are assignment tags, which are called thing tags, and there are tutorial tags for each one. Um, mm -hmm. Again, following that structure. And then there is um, a... Um, a type for the examples done, which um, for right now I've just been manually entering them, but sure. uh, that, that's very similar. Now, the real magic, and this is where the crazy part comes in, um, is I have it available under the appearance menu is this thing called assignment bank options, um, and asked to figure out how to add it up to the top here. Um, where is it? Uh, when you're out on the main site, um, this is kind of to figure out. Under theme options, you get to the same uh, thing, and this is the custom interface I've been working on. And so, look at you. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, this has been kicking my butt. So. Um, wow, it looks like it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one piece, one important tab, which is not here now, is there's going to be documentation on all the things you're going to have to do. Um, and and so that'll be that that'll be the setting, but. Um, what I have right now is, okay, so right now they're called challenges. Like, let's say um, I could switch them all and call them doodles. Yeah. Um, and it has to be plural, and I probably need to check that they're plural. Um, I want an option like when people um, uh, add an assignment or a doodle. Um, some cases people want to review them. So right now I have them set to draft so you can moderate them. Sure. Or they could be published immediately like we do on DS-106. Um, I have the draft right now because the spammers have already found this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bastards. Yeah. Um, and then I have, on the layouts, I wanted some flexibility um, for the sizes of the uh, images for the thumbnails and the embeds. So if you want to change your design, so um, the index page would be um, what comes up um, when you um, go to one of the uh, categories like cooking. Yeah. So if you wanted the um, embeds and the images, um, like right now I've got this one, Outspice Yourself. I have this sort of like long, narrow thumbnail. Um, you could actually change that, um, the size of the thumbnails it generates when you add things. And the yeah. same way for an individual um, entry, like when you go into Outspice Yourself, you actually might want this. I have it set for bigger. Because to me, it looks nicer as a bigger thumbnail. Yeah. Totally not necessary, but I just wanted to see. Um, no, totally. I mean, it makes it, sense because that visual is very important. That's part of what people like about the DS-106 assignment thing is how yeah. when you go to it, it's very visual. You know what you're looking for and you can get there. Yeah. And, and basically, when you go into the uh, the media settings, um, oh, you don't. it doesn't show up here. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, but when you upload a media, you know, it, it normally shows you the size that creates, like, thumbnail, medium, and large. Sure. Uh, there's two extra sizes that this size creates for everything that's uploaded. Um, and WordPress really makes that done beautifully. And then um, I have right now the default thumbnail if um, an assignment doesn't have one. 
Um, right now, I have it pointing to a um, to a URL. Yeah. But I want to figure out a way, and that's what I've been working on, try to figure out to access the the media uploader in Word in WordPress, where you just upload something uh, as media to the site, and it becomes part of the site. Um, that's really um, slick. Man. I'm kind of I'm, really I'm, I'm kind of close, but it, it's not quite there. Um, see, this is still doodles. Um, and then some more options. So, how examples are added? Um, so right now you, you would say you would check if you want to do things with um, Feed WordPress. Um, I have a little check here, so it's letting me know that Feed per WordPress is not installed yet. Yeah. Um, and, th and it'll remind you that you need to install it. Um, and that's going to be that's a whole another thing to discuss a little bit later about how to, to set up the feed WordPress integration. Um, um, but there's a place also on the um, page where it says you know um, if your blog is is part is being syndicated to a site, so you should you need to be able to designate what the site name is and what the URL is so you can link to it. Um, an option, look another typo. Um, if you want to enable people to add um, examples directly via that form, you could turn that on or off. Um, and then the same thing for examples. When they're added, you may want them to go in immediately, or you may want to um, uh, moderate them. <laughs> That's great. I <laughs> and love then, that. Yeah, and then for the ratings, um, it does a check to see if WP uh, ratings is installed. Um, and then basically, um, it's not really a setting here. If you install the plugin and activate it, it's going to use it. Um, yeah. If it if it's not there, it won't use it. Exactly. And then, and then um, there's a few things you have to change in the options. You know, you you decide whether you want one, five stars or thumbs up, thumbs down. You could use any of the ratings, um, but the documentation needs um, a little bit of work there. So um, I'm going to show you what happens. Like, so I changed the um, names of the things to doodles. Yeah. And here's what here's where I'm hoping things. So I'm going to save all the changes. Um, and now when I go to my site, uh, let's go home. Uh, there are 11 doodles and within three examples. Uh, yeah. When, when, I go really the cooking, uh, when I go in the cooking pages, there's the cooking doodles. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's replicated everywhere in the site. Um, so the name of the thing propagates. Yeah, um, I love that. The other tricky thing, which I realized that I like spent a day working on, is that um, when you change um, the thing name, you have to change all the tags. Um, and look, it didn't exactly work. These should have been changed. It worked before, because like these tags, these assignment one thirty four should be doodle one thirty four, gotcha. and mook mocking assignment. Um, so I had it working. So, but basically, it goes through and it basically um, rewrites the taxonomy names. It's pretty easy to do. Um, yeah. I'm just missing a step, but um, it just would mean. I mean, basically, you want to do all the setup beforehand and make these decisions before you go in. Yeah. But and then I wanna... it will actually that that you can actually have the automatically created tags with doodles or yeah. assignments or whole yeah. thing, whatever you call. It. Right. Um, and I wanted to make it so if you decide if you decide you wanted to change it, it would go back and um, back change all the tags because you don't want some tags being assignments and some tags being doodles. So it would overwrite pre-existing tags. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, right. And it's actually not even changing the tag; it's changing the name of the tag in the database. Um, huh. Now, now the fun part is, um, and I don't have this working yet, but I have the interface, so. Um, the types of doodles that you're going to be creating, you want to be able to add these. Um, so yeah. it, sh it shows me the ones I have. I've got cooking, and I've got a description. Um, but for each one of these, there's going to be a need, you need to have a field for a thumbnail. Yeah. And if you're syndicating, you have to have a URL for feed WordPress. So there's going to be possibly four things you need per type of assignment. Um, yeah. And figuring out that is going to be a fun little trick. I'm I'm hoping I can do something where there's little things that toggle open and closed for all these fields. Yeah. Um, but right it's, now I'm just trying I'm trying to get it, it to work. It's really streamlined and it makes a lot of sense. I mean the way you're pushing people through it to create an assignment repository, you know, yeah. in four steps. I mean that's amazing. Yeah, and and you know honestly, I could have it done if like it was just all settings that you edited inside, you know, the the theme template. But I really wanted to um, 
I, I want to make it push button, even though I said no. Yeah. Well, push my, button in the degree that it's not going to create the community, right? You right, can focus right. on creating the community. Exactly, exactly. So the, the other thing I figure is like a way to add um, like several of these at a time. So right now I'll have one um, field to add a new doodle. Um, yeah. um, and I want to make it so you don't have to keep save, add, save, add. So um, I think there's a way to do it. Um, so again, there'll be documentation, and then there's a thing you can restore all the default settings, um, uh, and it'll, it should revert it. But this is really hairy. <laughs> Alan, that's amazing, man. Good I know, but uh, well, thanks. But I, it's there's there's some little things that just um, the media uploader. I sort of have it, but it's hard to get the right piece of information back, and and I'm not sure how to do multiple ones on on this page, but um, so. And it, if we can find money, which is always the key, because you know this is work you're doing, this is labor you're putting in. Do you think you could do something like this for like the daily create? Yeah, um, actually, yeah. Let me let me talk about the daily create um, in a second, because okay, that that's a lot easier. I should have started with that one, but <laughs> <laughs> this is this has been good. The, the other thing that I, I want to get at is um, the whole thing. If you're going to use feed WordPress. You have to have a site somewhere where you're syndicating stuff in with those same tags. That's right. Um, and so um, I know how to write. You know, I think I can make the adding of the feeds to feed WordPress automatic, so you don't have to do that manually in here, um, because it's like we do in DS one hundred six. Because it's only like I'm going to have to create like five feeds um, yeah. that need to get added. So you just write. You know, doing what Martha did. You know, creating links and getting the right information in the fields. Um, but somewhere I got to set up like a test reader, you know, um, and, and I think I'm just going to do like a super basic one, not formatted, so I can can experiment with it. But um, one of the things I want to do um, when I go to the UK is um, I'm hoping to go hang out for a day or two with uh, Martin Hoxie. That's awesome. And, and um, I said, let's sit down and just in one day, let's see if we can um, code hack a WordPress-based reader because he's actually done all of the bits. Yeah, um, that's right. And, and the thing I want to do is, is the one that I know you've been asking for is, is the way um, to make it so you don't have to manually be editing feed WordPress. Um, I mean, that would be rad without the forms. Yeah, and, and I think I think he did it in his Octel site. It's just adding profile fields um, to a WordPress account. Um, that's just a subscriber account, which is kind of what we used BuddyPress for way back when. That's right, um, exactly. But um, what I liked about the way he set it up was you could change your own feed just by editing your profile. And, um, and that way we don't have to be doing the manual um, editing of feed WordPress like we do now. Um, you know, that, 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 I mean, between that, this, we'll talk about the daily create in a second, but the thing about the assignment repository is you give them the option for the feed, but if they don't go for that option, stuff can be added manually. Or yeah, yeah. Or, or, Whoever could put it in, and that could be their site of kind of like almost, uh, you know, an exhibit of stuff, an exhibit of assignments. Like it just depends upon how you want to imagine. Yeah, I, f I forgot one I, more thing. I forgot the one more thing. Looseness so. is really cool. I like that a lot. You, that was a lot of kind of uh, forethought to make that work. It's hard, and you know, I, I I wrote this somewhere, but like, it's one thing to sit down and make this stuff work, like we did for DS one or six. We're good at that. Um, Exactly. And, and, and you get it done and it works and maybe it's not the best elegant but the stuff works. Um, but trying to make it generalizable um, for other people is a whole different game. So um, well, this is good though because what you've done, if you think about it for a second, is you've abstracted out this as an online teaching kind of design element beyond the s yeah, which is really kind of like that area we're in right now, trying to do it. We're not trying to make you know DS one hundred six can be what you do, but you can actually think about how DS one hundred six harnesses the web to do what it does. Yeah, you know, and cool. I, I know, I know, you know, I know people. A lot of Jason Green has been chomping like this, and Mike Caulfield wants something. So, um, you know, I, I I'd like to get it to a point soon where we can actually distribute it, um, and and nice. I keep, I'm. I'm getting closer, but I just really underestimated a, a lot of this part. So, um, doing the form submission, I wanted to bypass the need for gravity feeds. I love gravity feeds, um, yeah. but you know, it's, it's a premium plugin, and um, you know, we, we could make it a requirement. But I, I thought 
I can figure out a way to do this without it. Um, yeah. So, Which is cool um, because then it's truly free. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to create um, something to doodle that's MOOC mocking, um, oh, I'm not supposed to say that word. I can't. That's right. I thought you gave up. That's what I saw on Twitter. I'm on Mook, Mooktober. I can't you say and Kernahan. the word. Um, so it's the same thing. David Kernahan. He'll catch made, you. He'll watch made you. Made me not say it. Um, let's see. Alan Cog. Um, so again, um, you get to do the default. Um, it's going to be really hard to do. Um, I was really proud of this to set up the, um, the toggle thing. So it's just like the other thing. So if it's on YouTube, Vimeo, etc., you just put the URL in. It's going to do an automatic embed. Um, it could be on another site. So in this case, you're going to have to put a URL in, and you have to upload a thumbnail image. And it actually shows you um, the aspect ratio of the current um, image, that the, the size that it uses, because um, it's going to crop it. It's going to crop it to that. Um, or if you just want to just upload a thumbnail image, so um, let's just um, do something from uh, from YouTube. Let's see, uh, I just use this. I don't even know what this video. Oh, this is uh, some digital story that Sandy Jensen Brown Jensen Brown Jensen sent me. Okay. <laughs> Sandy no. Brown Jensen Brown Jensen. <laughs> I always get a, what is that? Is she related to uh, Rowan Peter Peter Rowan? Yeah, I always get. I never know whether it's Jensen Brown or Brown Jensen. So, um, I have a little check here um, just to make sure people write something longer. Um, That's awesome. Um, and I like that you got it all. Like, hey, listen to you. Now, what sense. I want? Yeah, the other thing that I want to add that's not here is um, there should be a preview. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So um, it was created. I got some things with my apostrophes. Um, you can create another one. Um, and if this worked, yep, there's the embed. Um, everything's nice. in there. Um, I got to do something about the tag here. But, um, yeah, the, the assignment submission pretty much works. Um, I might have to add a CAPTCHA because the spammers have been um, adding things. Yeah. Um, and uh, I it's think... It's good uh, to know they care. Yeah, it's good. To, <laughs> they do care a lot. They they, they really care. want. Um, so that's where it's at. You know, it's it's, it's going to take a, another probably few weeks. Not a few weeks because I got the travel coming up. But um, um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't think anyone's like. I mean, this is a gift to the world. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, I know, you know but like, I I want to see it done and out there. You know. Yeah, um, it will. Be. It's amazing. I, it'll it'll be, it'll be flawed, but. The progress you made, well, good, and it's open source, and other people can fix those tools if they want. I hope you know? so. Yeah. And that's the whole idea, though, is, I mean, the process of that, of what you're talking about, for me, is abstracting this out for other people to use. Yeah. So it doesn't get conflated with DS-106 as a cult. Sure, that works for you. It's like, well, it's a cult, but it's also an approach. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and, and that's why I think, brilliant. Um, I mean, ideally, like, if we were doing this from scratch again and having done a couple of these syndication sites, um, I like the idea of having something like Martin built that looks like a reader, that acts like a reader, um, that has the things where you can track which things people are favoriting, but it's easy to browse. You know, you can't browse the flow in the blog. So to me, I would build a standalone reader to be the aggregator hub of a site um, and build your course site separate so you're not commingling those right. two things. So you can organize all the, the that. So I would like to build the standalone 106 reader, whatever we call it. Um, yeah. That, that you, you could know, just you, you could just use on your own. I mean, you just want an RSS reader and create bundles and things. Um, you know that's what would what, be cool? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm with you entirely. I think you're right. And it's one of the things I really like about Tumblr is that Tumblr acts as you have your site and it's still the sites you're subscribed to. But that dashboard just acts as a visual reader. Yeah. So you, if you're doing a media-heavy class like DS106 and you allow people to just fly through the visual creations people make, yeah, it's going to change the way people experience the class. And that, that's an idea because I've been thinking more like you know Google Reader to quickly browse posts. But 
um, you know, a and way that to, might be just an option. Like you do yeah. it as a Google reader, or you do it as a visual Tumblr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, That's, I'm saying this. It's easy for me to say because I'm sitting here like, hey, I can't do it. So. No, no, no. That's really helpful. In fact, I, I'm already thinking like it could be the same engine, and you just have two different um, themes that you choose how to view it, and you want to switch to the the Tumblr view or the um, the, yeah. the reader like view. Because the um, reader like view is great if it's the textual heavy history class, for example. Yeah. You know, you're doing research, and you know the visual is great if it's an art class or if it's digital storytelling class. It's something where you know you're going to have a hardcore visual. Or students could say, you know what, for this week it's going to be all design assignments, so I'm going to visual. Right, right. Let them choose. That would be cool. And then this side, I know it's going to be everybody's reflection, so I'm going to go to the text. And and what we could what we could yeah. add, and, and I know it would work um, because it'd just be categories. Is um, what, what we lost with readers the ability to set up those like uh, bundles. So you could have you know widgets or RSS feeds for groups of feeds that you build yeah. yourself. Yeah. And it actually also, when you start thinking about that, and I think you're absolutely right, is you can actually get into the situation where you're like, okay, here's all the feeds for these classes, right? And you yeah. can actually start watching them commingle. Like, yeah, show me all the all the recent posts from this class, and they'll come into your reader. And then, no, I just want to filter it by my class. But right. you can actually play with that and yeah. see it. And at any given time, you can see what's going on, in the, say, for example, the DS-106 universe or a class that also is broadly spread out across several campuses, you know, institutions, name it. Yeah, and honestly, that's just a category, you know, in a standalone reader. That's um, exciting. And I think that's, you know, there's a lot of different things to approach and deal with. Yeah. But one of them is that ability to aggregate and visualize the work. And I think of all the things I've been experiencing with lately, Tumblr is the one that does it best for me. Yeah. Because of what I'm watching and looking at, and what I'm interested in reading. Right, so, right. It's yeah. Interesting. For, forefront to visual, there is. Yeah, and, awesome. and it depends on your class, you know. And there could be maybe another theme for a different kind of class that's maybe dealing with like blueprints or right. dealing with like you know survey data, and they want to visualize that in different ways. So yeah, it would depend. Okay. What I want to do with the Daily Create is um, a problem with the Daily Create now is we're tied to these media services. Be they work well to create the embeds, but um, I don't I don't do any audio ones anymore because to create a group on SoundCloud I have to create a new SoundCloud account because you can only create one group yeah. per account. So um, that's why you haven't seen too many audio um, things. Yeah, and that's been a, a problem yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's always been. I mean. Uh, Last year, I asked a bunch of our friends to create fake SoundCloud accounts or groups, um, yeah. and then I've created about thirty or forty different um, fake SoundCloud accounts using you know the the plus on the Gmail account to create a a, a new one. Um, they they did give us me last year sort of an upgraded one, which allowed me to create like up to ten groups, and then I maxed that out. Um, and I never really heard back from You're SoundCloud. You're a group junkie. <laughs> yeah, I'm a group junkie. And then, well, and then the problem is with Our with groupies. YouTube, with YouTube um, they they broke the functionality of tags, so tags don't even work um, to aggregate yeah. stuff out of YouTube. Um, and then the whole thing about making people use a service to share their stuff. Um, yeah. I want to be more flexible, and then it it ends up making the categories tied to the types of media. So if you're doing a daily create, you know, for math, you might want to have your categories thematic and not based on media. Um, you know, it could, you you may want geometry daily creates or um, algebra daily creates. Uh, That's right. So my idea is to go back to making um, Twitter the place you submit your daily creates. So you would respond to at whatever your account is. Ours is at uh, whatever, TD, the DS, yeah, the Daily Create account, and there'd be a unique hashtag that would be the, the tag for the thing. And then the site would basically um, work with the Twitter API to, um, to basically import as custom types all the tweets that um, include that hashtag. Um, huh. so, so on the display page, you would see embedded tweets and ones that have embedded media would show up there, like YouTube videos, um, etc. Um, and, and 
that con that conceptually is not too hard to do because I've been doing the embedded Twitter stuff already. Um, yeah. And so, um, and well, it actually, I... it, it would make the um, the site more flexible, um, but also the way people submit. Um, yeah, they submit through Twitter. Yeah. Now, people who wanted to use that who didn't want to use Twitter, would there yeah. be something like what you have with with the with the assignment bank where you could just say, okay, submit it here. Here's a form for today's thing. I guess you could do that, yeah. Right? I mean, if they don't want to use any of that, great. Like, I could see a class saying, look, I'm not going to have my 12th graders or my 10th graders right, yeah. on Twitter. Right. So, okay, you still want to use a daily create, well, then just make it form-based, and it seems like you've already figured out the form. Yeah, that could be done. You know, it depends what what you're asking them to submit. You know, if they're uploading media, you know, you can upload images you could do. Um, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be uploading necessarily video um, or um, audio. That would have to be a link. I would say video would have to be a link. Audio? Yeah. Is there any way you could get like a like a HTML5 player that if one saw an MP3 file? So say you linked it, you said okay, it only could be MP3. Yeah. Just because of simplicity, and when they uploaded that, it kind of embedded it and put a player. In. Yeah, yeah. And it limited it to like you can have it can't be more than two megabytes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could set. They could upload MP3s. I mean, you can upload those to the WordPress uh, uh, media. Um, so that. Oh, but they, would they, they automatically embed them? You could. Yeah, you can make them. It, it's just that WP Audio um, plugin that I use on the main site, where it just looks for a, um, a, a link to an MP3 URL. Um, but that's that's a good idea to think about ways. And, and I would keep, you know, the writing ones that we have right now work really those well. Those are great. Yeah, those are brilliant. I think they work the best of all. Of them. Yeah. Like those uh, uh, Twilight Zone writing assignments were brilliant. Yeah, and, and so I yeah I would leave that like I would say like if you're going to do a written one, you could have an option to say um, people submit it through that interface, or they could just if it's a short one, they could write it as a tweet, and then you'd aggregate it just as a as a tweet. Um, I think that's awesome. I think that makes total sense. Yeah, so I I would love to you know again do the daily create as well. Yeah, I think that should be next. Yeah. The daily crate, and then the reader and the subscription, and you yeah. really have a very nice framework. And then you could tie back in the mixer and yeah. Uh, Inspire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inspire, I love Inspire. This it needs a little work on the site. Inspire would be nice if you could basically say, oh, you know, here's assignments that are in the the assignment thing. This one is inspiring. Click. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Right? Yeah, totally. This inspired me. Click go. Yeah, one click. Yeah, one click inspire. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I think that would be brilliant, right? Yeah. I mean, look, this stuff has legs. <laughs> and that's why, I mean, I really think that's why, you know, we should get the Shuttleworth Foundation. <laughs> we should get, I do, I think we should get this to develop out yeah, a suite yeah. of possibilities, not only for this kind of thinking of online courses using the web, but also as a series of way where people can get their own spaces like we're doing with the Made of One's Own and kind of archive their stuff and take control of what it means to manage your identity. Yeah, you know, and, so. and, this, and this way with separate pieces, you know, you can pick the parts that that work for you. You might just want an assignment bank. You might just want right. a leader. And, yeah. And think about it too because that's, that's where maybe we frame the shuttle one, right? You do One is for building a course experience using right. the web and stack. And another is thinking about the individual experience for hosting and building their own space. Yeah. And maybe understanding those two is somewhat separate. Like you're kind of separating out, which is nice, the syndication and the course reader from the actual course site and the student site. Right. And I think that's a kind of, we kind of have put them all together because we've been working with duct tape. But if we have the ability to separate it out and make it seamless, right. although at the same time articulate it beautifully, it's a really powerful suite of tools. And, and then when it's uh, installed on Reclaim Hosting, the Installatron script could say, look, exactly. I, I, I want a site with um, a, a course reader and an Inspire and a Daily Create. Bam, bam, <laughs> bam. I mean, and you can make it check-in box, but yeah. you can also, like, here's what I like about the Installatron ideas. So it can be checkbox, and it can be kind of in a box, but not truly in a box, like you said, because you've got to work so hard to promote the community. But on the other side, you don't have to. It's your host, it's yeah. your server, it's open source. Do what you want if you want to go beyond. Yeah, yeah. I should I, I, I should I should start at the beginning also that um, basically 
creating a site that would be an assignment bank is it's it's installing two themes. It's the parent theme and the child theme. Um, and so you would install them like you do any other themes. Um, activate them. It does a couple things on activation. Um, and it would probably by default create a basic index page and form page to add things. Um, and then you customize. A child theme. Oh, find yeah. it. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you hear me? No, it sort of dropped out a second. But yeah, my network was, was having problems. You said it was wonderful. I got that. No, you're wonderful. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I think you're wonderful. But the thing, too, is like the child theme. I think you're talking about child themes and parent themes. Yeah. Yeah, that's so what you you're installing. Ins you have yeah. to install, like, will it be like one theme? Like you'll say, here is the DS-106 assignment bank theme? It's, it's two. It's, so there's two folders in your theme directory. There's a WP Bootstrap, which is the parent theme, and then yeah. everything I've written is in this child theme. Um, gotcha. now, the, the trick is, like, if you when you start wanting to modify the child theme, you know, let's say you start doing, you know, I set it up so that it's clearly indicated where you could add all the styles, you know, if you want to override the styles in the parent theme. Um, yeah. You can do that. And th there is a thing in the WP Bootstrap where it has some pre-built variants on that basic theme. Um, yeah. And it did something funky when I was playing with it, so I, I took it off of the demo site. Um, but there's, like, plug-and-play variants that you can put into the parent theme. Um, but I don't know I don't know whether you'd want to go down the route of doing, like, a child of a child theme. Um, I've never really tried anything like that. Um, so, you know, I, I want to get the core of it into pretty good shape so it doesn't get to be a situation where, like, people start using it and we have to tell them, you know, you have to modify these particular files, but um, That's right. I just, you know, we're not professionals here. No, and it's a framework for right now. Yeah. yeah. What happens in the future is something else, but, I yeah. mean, you need a model that people need to demonstrate and then show yeah. us what we need to do or what needs to work or build it themselves. Right, but I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, when I get back from all my travel uh, first week in November, um, that I could have this hopefully ready for people to start playing with uh, by the end of the month, if not sooner. Mm -hmm. When do you start your travels? Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, six yeah. weeks or five weeks of travel. <laughs> well, you got a good, you got a good spring to hang out in Arizona, right? Yeah. You got, you got me kind of settled in a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's great yeah. being here, and so I'm making up for it. So you know, it's, it's Alaska, and then Virginia for 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 your events, which are just going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then we're doing the TEDx thing in Puerto Rico. Um, then, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see you for a good leg of those. I know, years. I know. You, you'll get your fill of me and ready to shit me off again. And then uh, I want to go with you to England. Are you kidding me? I know. I'm really looking forward to that. So um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. The Mozilla Fest in London, and then I just um, add like ten days to um, to visit. I'm going to visit. Um, um, uh, Mariana Funes from our active DS106 participant. Yeah, very, the psychiatrist very, very, of the group. Yeah, she's fascinating. And she uh, hopefully um, uh, uh, Tony, um, Psych Media, Tony Hurst. The great uh, Hurst. Kernahan, uh, Weller, um, Jonathan Worth, um, Josie Frazier, Helen Keegan I want to visit. And, and then wow. hopefully get up to Scotland and, and hang out with uh, Martin Hoxie and maybe John Johnston. Oh, uh, that's right. John is just John's an incredible force. I mean, he's he is amazing. He's I'm just really proud of the work that he does, man. He's, he's stalwart. Yeah, and he, talk about as consistent as they come. Yeah, yeah. Just, and then you, I guess then you just have to go to New Zealand. You know, there's <laughs> probably still a lot more people in uh, in uh, England, right? Doug Belshaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see Doug definitely. We, we, yeah, we talked a little bit about he's going on vacation, but I'll see him at the. Mozilla Fest. Um, yeah. Um, and, and that that's, that's been funny. like um, I just barely started tapping into, but that's a pretty incredible community um, there, and they're they're really interested in the in the story tangle uh, story tangle the storytelling angle of um, of their maker tools. Well, I'm telling you, I mean, I talk about maker tools. <laughs> anyway, this is a different conversation, but there's a 3D printing tool that Tim Owens found that. Ryan Bazell has been using created a 3D scan of himself. <laughs> that is absolutely like him. Really? Like scary. 
Really? <laughs> yeah, so talk about maker tools. I don't know. I know that's not exactly what you're talking about, but it just made me think, like, Jesus, we're, getting, we're, about to, we're about to enter a new era. Those guys are getting... They're, 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 they're replicating. They're, they're creating these, these plastic mutant soldiers that are going to take over. It really, it's like March of the Wooden Soldiers. You know, I can build my own army now. That's really cool. To figure that's out, cool. you know, the singularity. And they're going to be beautiful, too. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ones that are modeled on me will be. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Well, you yeah, you got a blast. Look at you. You're on the road, baby. Yeah. yeah I go well. back on the road. Yep, yep. Coming to your town, Jimbo. <laughs> well, good. And I actually, the work you're doing on the, uh, on the theme is amazing. Okay, thanks. Thanks. I, I'm really yeah, it I, is. I'm excited it's about awesome. it. Um, I, I was not excited about it around 1 a.m. last night when I was just banging my head. <laughs> you know, you're, 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 you're taking it all to another level. Uh, I, I hope so. But the thing is, um, I'm really... Um, I mean, I knew WordPress was powerful, but um, it, it reminds me a little bit of my first experiences with HyperCard because <laughs> HyperCard, you could basically re-script anything. You could write scripts that would write scripts that would write scripts, and and you went in this crazy recursion, but WordPress gives you access to basically do anything inside the public facing or the admin uh, side. Um, so, you know, I've, I've learned how to change all the, the menus on the dashboard and create these different special integration themes. Um, but, you know, I feel like I'm just starting to crack the surface um, of WordPress. No, nowhere near, you know, a, a boom George's level. But Well, I'll tell you, if you bring up that whole hypercard thing, and related to WordPress and Darcy, maybe he'll stop doing so much with people. Well. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll he's get not, out of desire to learn and actually do something WordPress. <laughs> he's too locked into the LMS, man. <laughs> I, I, I want to meet with him soon. I want to talk to him. You know, because he's one of my heroes. I want to talk to him. He he needs one of those things where like you know people get deprogrammed. We have to like snatch him up in a van and, and take him out to, <laughs> to, to, to Brian Lamb's house and the Patty Hearst of Ed Tech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Darcy instead of, instead of the machine gun of Patty Hearst, he's got the electric guitar in his hand. He'd just be saying the whole time and repeat, "It's not the tool, man. It's not the tool, man. It's not the tool, man. It's not the." Tool, man. Tool, man. It's not a battle. It's not about the LMS. It's not the tool, man. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, I got to say, I mean, um, I know you feel the same way, but um, that podcast that Brian Bennett did was just oh, wow. fantastic. You know, I he, mean, he, you were saying it. You said it on Twitter, and I read your post, and I agree with you entirely. It's one of the few explanations of DS106 that I felt almost satisfied with. Yeah. And I've been trying to do it for years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've kind of Martha and I were laughing at the um, the reclaim hosting thing. Like every person who came up to our table got a different explanation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it depend. It's it's true. It does depend. I mean, a it depends upon your experience with it. B it depends upon what you want out of it. You know, it's like an explanation. Like, how are you coming to me wanting to know? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a. That's good, though. Like you said, and I agree with you, it's like, it's a good sign, though, if you have a hard time explaining what it is. Right. So. Well, Brian sometimes did, it's a little, Brian did little it for bit us. of funding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I want to fund this new theme I'm developing. <laughs> I can't explain to you for what. I just need money. <laughs> exactly. Stop <laughs> asking me to explain myself. It takes too long to explain it. I just exactly. want to do it. <laughs> just give me the money and shut up. <laughs> yeah, that never works. No, it never does. Well, Unless, it, should, listen, it, might, it might work for you, but I, I've never gotten away with it. <laughs> Take my word for it. It works. It's going it to be works. great. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thanks Jim. again, Alan. This has been great. Yeah, it is. Your stuff is awesome. All right, and I will see you like in, like, what, two weeks or so? Two weeks it is, bud. All right, man. Take care. Later.